Okay, Deb. So let me show you some great examples of photos with added texture. These were done with the students uh, last semester. So it can be very, very subtle. She took this photograph, and then she took a picture of the texture of the wood behind it. And what you're going to do is you're going to layer one the texture on top of the photograph and change your blending mode. And it gives it just a subtle hint of the texture with it. And this is something that you really can't do just taking the photograph. You have to do it in digital editing. And it gives it just a certain bite, a certain other look to, uh, to your photograph. Here's another great one that turned out to be very, very painterly. So this background, I think she took a picture of, um, I think it was just a sheet of rust or something. All of this texture that you're seeing is not part of the photograph, but it adds a good bit of framing to the composition that she had already. Otherwise, it would have been just a regular uh, still life type painting. Let's see if I can get bigger one of this one. This one, another one, very, very subtle. Usually, your texture is going to show up in your lighter areas. It also shows up on your subject, so you can pay attention to that. This one I thought was really cool. When you zoom in, it looks like a painting, like it's painted onto a canvas. This was that uh, the chair that's in the drawing room. She took a picture of the seat. And this is the seat texture that was added to this whole peach to give it that kind of, uh, kind of look. Here's one that I did this morning. So here's my photograph of my still life. And here it is when I added texture to it. It's just a uh, slightly different way of changing it up. You're gonna, I don't wanna say destroy your image. You're just giving it something different uh, and added focal points to, uh, to work with. As a graphic designer, I use this kind of as a little technique. If somebody sends me a really bad photograph, it's low resolution, it doesn't look very good, but it has to be in their brochure, they have to put it on the poster, um, I'll go in and I'll maybe add some texture to it or I'll tweak the colors just a little bit. That way it looks stylish, it looks uh, just very stylized and I don't have to show them a, a bad photograph. It takes away, or it kind of distracts you from a low resolution image. So these are the uh, textures that I was working with. Found one of some stone. Let's see, here's that baking pan that I had. And there's all the little dots and stuff on the edge. Also had one of metal, some metallic rust, and this one was for wood. So let me show you how I opened up. Uh, I'll redo this one and show you how I did that. Drag it into Photoshop. Now for this one, of course, it's a JPEG, so I don't have to worry with my camera raw. If you, if you do use camera raw, go ahead and edit it and then bring it into Photoshop. Then I'm gonna open up my texture. Here's one trap that I don't want you to do. Do not simply click on the image and then drag it into Photoshop this way. This, uh, this will create kind of a, a layer that you don't wanna have. It's called a, uh, a smart object layer. Instead, drag it directly to the Photoshop icon and this will of course open up two different windows you can drag that off this is what you want to have you want to have the two different windows if you drag it directly into your photograph it's it's gonna mess up not work very well I'm gonna use my move tool to simply click on this image and drag it over to the here everybody with me so far so far what we've done is really simple now, if your image is a little bit smaller than the area, or if you need to scale it down, you can always go to Edit, down to Transform, and there's Scale. And this will give you little um, dots on the edges, and you can change the size of it and drag it up. And I'm going to hit Return to lock it in. <clears throat> All right, so let's go over to our Layers palette. Notice we got our texture in Layer 1 and our picture in the background. The fun comes in changing up your blending mode from normal to any one of these. It's really difficult to say what you're going to get when you choose each one of these, so it's just kind of fun to play around and see what you get uh, with each one. So I'm going to back out, and let's choose multiply just to start off with. All right, so usually multiply or this group will make things a little bit darker, but now you can start to see just a little bit of the texture that's interplaying with this one. Let's try some of the other ones. The lightener screen will lighten up the image, so you'll see a lot more of the, uh, the top layer. Let's try linear dodge. Yeah, about the same. Overlay is usually what I do. This will kind of give you more of the true colors, but still 
you can pick up on a lot of that texture from there. I think the one that I used was Vivid Light. Yeah, that gave me the, um, the image that I really liked for this one. Now, if you think it's too much, so there's too much texture on this or you want to kind of back it off a little bit, in the top right-hand corner of your layers palette, adjust the opacity of layer one, your texture layer. If you drop the opacity, of course, it'll be a lot less intense with that layer. So I'm going to drop it down to, say, 80 or 70%. You can see if I start going even lower, I'm just going to lose the texture altogether. Or you can bring it back up. As with any other photograph that you're working on, you can take out lines, you can uh, add adjustments to it. So if I didn't want these two long lines over here, one tool I could have used was my healing brush tool. I showed you all several of this one. I'm going to use the spot healing. Oops, make sure I got the right layer selected. And so with my spot healing tool, I can click on one area. Oh, here's a cool little tip. Rather than clicking and trying to drag over the entire thing, well, undo that. I'm going to click once here, and then I'm going to scroll down to the very bottom, hold down Shift, and then click again. And it will draw a line from where you first clicked to where you second clicked. And since it was a straight area, it picked up on the entire thing. We'll give it a second to think about it. That should take out that line altogether. Pretty cool. So click once at the top, hold down shift, and click at the bottom, and it will draw a line from your starting point to your ending point. Uh, with any tool, any brush tool that you have, you can hold down the shift key and do that. Good question. And it took that out as well. So that's a really cool, different way of doing that. You can also add your any adjustments that you want to do. So if you want to tweak the colors or tweak um, your levels of what you're working on, you can always do that as well. So let's say I wanted to brighten up the hue and saturation of it. Clicked on hue and saturation. I've got my little hue and saturation level. And now with my properties open, I can change up the way it looks as well. Really kind of make it look funky. When adding texture, I really want to see the texture added to a photograph that you have. Make that really shine out. You know, don't, don't just let it be really subtle. Make it you know, kind of stand out a little more. Of course, yours doesn't have to look as wild as I've got mine up here. To work from that. Pretty cool. Very, very simple to do. If you have any photographs that you took that may not fall into a, a black background or a white background or something else that you've done, Use it for an added texture photograph. That's uh, where this can really come in handy. Okay, next one I wanted to show you was the light painting techniques. And I'll show you two different ones, uh, I'm not going to save that, that we can work with. So yesterday I took this light painting of the, uh, the bottle and I used just the green for it. And I saved this as a JPEG. <clears throat> so if you didn't shoot in camera raw, you can still edit these really well. But these are some things I would look for, for uh, particularly this photograph. One thing I like about it is just the, uh, the main central part of it. I don't really like the long tail that it has. This was when I turned on my light and I brought it into to make the photograph. So I'm going to just kind of paint over this area. I'll grab my paintbrush. Right now I've got a pretty big size. Also notice that my opacity is set to 50%, so as I paint, I can slowly build it up and out of the way. And what I want to do is I want to paint the same color uh, as my background is. Here's a good little um, keyboard shortcut to remember. If you hold down the Option key, you get your paint dropper. With this, I can click anywhere on my surface and pick up whatever color. So if I wanted this particular color of green, I can hold down Option and click you can see it picks up that green or maybe the white or some other area. So if you wanted to quickly select something and then start painting with it, that's how you can do that. So I'm going to pick up the background and then just kind of slowly get rid of this particular area until it fades out. Huh, it's funny, the screen on the overhead is a little bit lighter than my computer screen. Okay, much, much better. Of course, I can always grab my crop tool. And I'll just kind of crop it in to there. 
It's looking pretty good. Another thing um, that's kind of a composition thing, when, whenever you have especially a solid object, <clears throat> you want to make sure it's, uh, it's grounded. A grounded object means that you can see what it's resting on. Right now, I can't really see the table that it's sitting on, so it looks like it's hovering in midair. So I'm going to grab my dodge tool and just kind of lighten up this particular area. I can lighten up the whole bottle just a little bit. But I'm going to touch it. You see how the table is starting to show through? Because you can see the table, it starts to look grounded. It looks like it's uh, an actual solid object now. It's not just floating. And that's something that's kind of desirable in some compositions. Now, of course, if you wanted it to be that way, you can do that as well. Final thing to show you is you can adjust the colors of whatever you're working with. Don't think that you, just because it's green, it has to stay green. One of the adjustment filters that works best for changing your color is the color balance adjustment filter. With this one, here's the properties palettes, <clears throat> you can change the color or the tone, not just of the entire picture, but your, oops, undo that, your shadows, your midtones, or your highlights. So if I back out, I'm going to change the color of my midtones. And my midtones in this case are where the, the greens would be. So if I was to drag it and I want to make it red, you can see now I'm starting to add a little bit of red tones, but it's still, woo, too much. Wrong one. It still has just a halo of green working in it, but it's still slightly, slightly red over there. Let's, I'm going to bring it back. Let's try my highlights. See if I can get just the... There we go. So now my highlights are starting to be a little bit more red. Sorry, I keep hitting the wrong button to zoom in. Or I can change it to a cooler blue, more white from there. But this time I'm getting multiple tones within the, uh, the same composition. <clears throat> so color balance is what I would recommend for changing that up from that one. The last one is I took a photograph in... Um, Camera Raw. Where is that Camera Raw one? Oh, I bet I still have it on my memory card. That's why I don't have it up here. Huh. And you know, if you work in Camera Raw, you have a good bit of more control over the lights and darks. There it is. And so this was my raw image that I'm working from. Not too bad. I like the way it was drawn off, but I think I can make it look a lot better in Photoshop. So we'll dump it in. It's going to bring up the Camera Raw Editor. The first thing I'm going to adjust is, of course, my exposure. I'm going to bring that. I can work in just my highlighted areas or just my mid-tone white areas. So that's the, the streaks on top there to really glow. I can bring up just my highlights and you see that area is only being affected. Everything else is kind of staying the same. Versus if I wanted just the guitar to come up, I can affect my white areas. And it gets those mid-tones. Or I can also lighten up my shadows. And so you can see just that part. I want to keep that down. So I'm getting a lot better control over this. Let's even pull up the clarity. Ooh, that's kind of vibrance. You'll get a lot more color from this. So you get that golden type of effect. You can also adjust the temperature. So rather than having it so blue, type thing. Let's see, I'll pull it back over here. Speaking of doing two different tones of color, another thing you could choose is your split toning. This is at the very top center of your Camera Raw editor. With split toning, you can change the color of your highlights and down at the bottom, the color of your shadows. And this will give you two different colors when working with this. So I'm going to pull up the saturation. Let's see if we can change the color. Ah, there we go. So now it's becoming a lot more red, or I can make it a hot green, or a hot blue. Let's try making this hot, the highlights be blue. I'm going to let my shadows be red or purple. Uh, shadows and highlights. Computer is doing everything else from Kind of cool. Mm -hmm. The last thing I'd want to do is maybe touch up some of these edges. Like, I don't like the hard edge that's right here. So one thing I can do is to burn in this area and maybe burn in this area so that my eye is drawn more to the guitar. Remember in Camera Raw, if you only want to affect one area, you want to use your paintbrush. 
up at the top. And with this one, you go over to the right hand side. In this case, I want to drop my exposure. So I'm going to pull this down just a little bit. And I'm going to paint in this area. You can see it's going to get darker and darker. All I'm doing is telling it to affect this one little area. Let's drop the exposure even more. Wow, it really is. On my computer, this area looks completely black. But up here on the screen, what you're seeing, you can still see that edge right there. It's kind of interesting. Let's make this a little bit bigger. You can always play around with this much, much more. If you want to go back to your normal editing on the side, just choose either the hand or the zoom. I like using the hand so I can move around. And then I can pull this back in and maybe drop the exposure just a little bit and get rid of that as well. Pretty cool. All right. So those are some things you can play around with when doing your light painting and doing your textures. Feel free to add a texture to a light painting. So if you have a really cool one that you want to just do another one or do something with, that's uh, totally to, uh, good to use as well. When I'm ready to open it in Photoshop, remember just click Open Image, give it some time to think about it, then it'll open this up in, uh, in Photoshop by itself. Any questions for today? Today and tomorrow is going to be our editing day, editing day excuse me, and uh, everything will be due by tomorrow.